Greetings everyone, as my Patreon supporters will know from my recent video for them, I absolutely love pancake lenses, so it's great to see Nikon's first proper full frame pancake option for their new Z mount mirrorless camera system, the Z 26mm f2.8. It's available for a somewhat expensive price of $500 or £500 here in the UK and I'd like to thank Nikon very much for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks, although as usual this is a totally independent review. Aside from the lens's very thin size and low weight being an attraction, that 26mm focal length is also pretty interesting, being lovely and wide. The maximum aperture of f2.8 is only what you can typically expect of most pancake lenses that are this wide, but it still enables you to shoot in darker situations and get out of focus backgrounds when you move in closer to your subject. Overall, the lens could make itself really useful on your camera for all kinds of everyday photography. The lens's body is mostly made of plastic, although it is based on a metallic mount with a weather sealing gasket, a nice touch. The lens's only control point is a plastic control ring that turns very smoothly and can be set to adjust manual focus or set in your camera's menus to change other settings. When manually focusing, there is just a little bit of a lag with the focus motor, but it is responsive enough just about. The lens also exhibits a fair bit of focus breathing, as you can see here. The lens's autofocus motor is also not a strong point, it moves just averagely quickly and lets you know about this with an audible whirring noise. It does at least work accurately, however. You can't fix filters onto the front of the lens directly, but it does come with a thin little plastic hood which does have a 52mm filter thread. A slip-on cap covers that on the front. Overall, the build quality is nice and solid here, although that autofocus motor is a little old school. Ok, image quality. I'll be testing the lens today on a Nikon Z7 with its full frame 45 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. At f2.8 in the middle of the image, right away we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast. Over in the corners, sharpness is now just good, but contrast is way down with some ghosting on contrasting edges. Even with in-camera corrections, these corners are quite dark also. Stop down to f4 and f5.6 for small improvements in contrast, but even at f8 or f11, corner sharpness is still good but not great. Stop down as far as f16 and the image becomes much softer due to diffraction. Overall, while image quality is always fantastic in the middle, corner image quality never gets beyond the dizzying heights of just good. Ok, let's turn off corrections and see about vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera by shooting in RAW. Without corrections, unfortunately we see a lot of it, strong barrel distortion and very dark corners at f2.8. At f4 and f5.6, vignetting is reduced but still there, so those are some quite serious problems, and with the vignetting issue, even when using in camera corrections you will still see some darker corners. Now, the lens's minimum focus distance is a rather nice 20 centimeters, getting you fairly close to your subject here. The good news is that even at f2.8, close up image quality remains fantastically sharp in the center of your images with great contrast. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. Flaring is fairly low here, although bright lights do cause a little loss in contrast when directly in the frame. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f2.8, coma smearing is moderately strong here. Stop down to f4 for a dramatic improvement though, and at f5.6, it's all gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. They only really begin to emerge at f16, as you can see in the corners there, and they're not very strong. Now let's see about the quality of this lens's bokeh. You have to get pretty close to your subject to get out of focus backgrounds here, but when you do they look lovely and soft to me, although they do get a little more busy in transitional areas. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2.8 it's really strong, as you can see here. At f4 it's reduced, and at f5.6 it's gone. You can also observe some focus shift here, the focal point moves backwards noticeably as you stop the lens down. Overall, well, this is a rare example of a lens that I actually kind of enjoyed using, but which doesn't offer great image quality, especially for the rather high price you're paying for it. 
For your $500, you're getting a really fun little lens with great sharpness in the middle of your images, but the corners of your images display a number of quite serious problems, which is a bit of a pain on such a wide angle optic. All right, hope you all found that useful. I love testing out all these camera lenses and I like doing it in a standardized way so you can compare them all for yourselves. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who make a big difference to keeping these videos going and who get all kinds of exclusive bonus content and other videos which I really enjoy putting together for them. Check it out in the description below. Thanks for watching and ciao for now.